we've talked a, a decent amount about fasting, but like, I think fasting now is, is it's like, what is fasting? You know, is it water yeah. only? Is it only having salt? There's, you know, you just mentioned a bone broth fast. There's, um, you know, fat, you know, fat fueled fasted. So for me, like fairly new to the world of fasting, I've done a couple of like 24 hour ones. I, I do, I try not to eat anything really real solid till the afternoon, you know, bone mm -hmm. broth or, you know, things like that in the morning, cacao, some things like that. But what do you define as like a fast yeah. and what are some of the different ways that we could use various forms of fasting to optimize our health? Okay. I love this question. And I want to just set the tone to make sure I get this in here on the concept of metabolic flexibility. So what metabolic flexibility says is, you know, I talked about all the benefits of ketosis. So we can't get too myopic or tunnel vision in how we define things, um, both in the medical world, but also in the, you know, direct to consumer <laughs> human space, I suppose. Uh, and so when I say I want you to make ketones as a benefit, you might be making ketones at 65 grams of carbs a day. I might be making ketones at 45 grams of carbs a day. Someone who's still doing high intensive exercise might be making ketones at 95 grams of carbs a day. And someone who has severe insulin resistance might not be making ketones until they go below 30 grams of carbs a day, right? So I just want to kind of set that tone of, you know, when we're using these terms like fasting or keto, generally there's these constructs, but then based on our biochemical uniqueness, based on our amount of muscle mass, based on our activity factor, and then based on our stress response, if our body is in survival or regulatory mode, we're going to have a different outcome from those various approaches, if that makes sense. Uh, you know, and so just like to kind of lay that there. So like, I always hear, well, you can't have a banana in your muffins and call them keto. And I'm like, if I test my blood and I'm making ketones after I eat this banana, I sure as heck can, you know, now you might look at a list and say, it says, no, bananas in the red zone on a keto list. You can't have it. Well, keto is a metabolic state. It's not a yes or no food list. Right. Um, and so that's kind of how I look at, you know, again, I'd prefer to get that one banana divided by 12 versus a cup of allulose or some crappy, you know, chemically derived, maybe it's naturally derived, but to take corn into erythritol takes a lot of processes to make it into a white powder kind of thing. Um, and so I prefer that banana. So taking that kind of constructs into fasting, when someone says, well, does that break your fast? I always say, well, first off, <laughs> fasting is a dimmer switch. It's not a light switch. So it's not like you tip your toe and like, oh, the fasting stopped. Oh, the fasting started, right? Like it's not that um, on or off or dynamic. Um, it's a dimmer switch. And so we see that calorie restriction and intermittent fasting and ketosis all can have similar mechanisms on autophagy, mTOR, sertulin. So when we look at some of these mechanisms, the really nerdy stuff on anti-aging, on fighting, um, you know, the, the, the brain plaque formation and or having neurological benefits, that's usually what people are looking for or body fat burn. That's usually why people fast. Um, and so... Fasting for someone might be a bone broth fast because they're still hypocaloric or lower calorie than eating a full meal. Um, they're not going to be provoking an insulin response. And so they're not going to get uh, disruption in a fed state by those mechanisms. And they might get more therapeutic benefit, especially if they have Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis and they need to bathe their gut in those amino acids that the broth provides and that gelatin and collagen. Uh, for fasting, someone might need to add that fat to their fast, like I suggested earlier, especially if keto is new to them because their body's used to only using glucose. And so they have to be given that abundance or that kind of plate of, of fat offering to start the day for the body to say, okay, should I, should I mess with this and see what happens if I make this other energy substrate and how, how does that feel metabolically? So feeding fat for some could be appropriate for fasting. And then for others, they're going to need to do just tea or just water or just black coffee, which would be considered like a pure fast, um, which is basically five or zero calories. And, um, you know, those individuals ideally, though, again, have that body fat reserve. And where we can go wrong is if we over restrict and don't have what the body needs, and then the body goes into a sympathetic fight or flight mode. And so I would say probably... For you, I would watch doing 24-hour fasts. 
because it could drive more autonomic nervous system survival mechanisms, which actually could stress your body, throw off cardiovascular regulatory mechanisms and or just homeostasis in the body because the body's like, well, shit, I don't know if he's going to feed me tomorrow. So we're just going to do this for a little bit. Um, and people can see a lot of uh, insomnia, digestive disturbances, um, some of these epinephrine or adrenaline, like fight or flight surges. I had a guy that is just a biohacking client of mine. And so I think he listens to me as one of his many. Um, and so he was going to go on a four day water and salt fast. And I advised against it. And the second or third night he had to go to a 24 hour clinic because he thought that there were spiders crawling on his body because he had such an ad adrenaline fight or flight surge of survival. Um, and so when we try to like white knuckle for optimal health, <laughs> and that's that doctrine creates disconnect, right? When our body's literally saying like, I'm hungry, it's growling. It's, you know, um, I think for spiritual mechanisms, maybe, right? But for, if we're actually breaking it down and saying a health mechanism, not many people are actually primed to do that full 24 hours because we're not in a parasympathetic space. We're living in blue light. We're living in industrial toxins. We're not out in the woods hunting and hoping to catch a deer, you know, like <laughs> that would be a reasonable time to fast. If you're camping under the stars, if you're doing it like a hunter gatherer, I think you could make it. I think otherwise, probably not optimal for most unless they have a lot of reserve and that that's being medically supported. Got it. So someone like me, I'm about six foot, 185 pounds, doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do just like a water and salt right. only fast. Right. So you would want to do like a protein and or even fat fast, you know, to, to really support and get if you wanted to level up ketone production, if you wanted it. Right. And so it could still be hypocaloric. Fasting has to be hypocaloric, meaning low calorie but it does not have to, again, dimmer switch, right? It does not have to be distressing and drive imbalance in the body um, where the body is totally in this surge of survival. Uh, and so, you know, if you're typically consuming, let's say 2,800 calories, you could do a very solid fast that was maybe 1,600 calories. You're still in that caloric restriction, but you're getting 120 grams of protein. You're, you know, and so we need to feed the muscle for most individuals.